Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us now start our discussion of our first model what I told that circular flow diagram ok circular flow diagram. So, through this diagram ok let me now introduce here two concepts called microeconomics and macroeconomics. So, microeconomics is uh, that uh, portion of economics where we will discuss, we discuss uh, how uh, individual behaves ok. This individual may be one single person or may be one unit like farm or household, how they behave, how they interact among themselves and so on. So, decision this is about microeconomics is about the decision making or optimal decision making of economic agents and their interactions among themselves ok. What is macroeconomics then? Macroeconomics is how the entire society operates, how the entire economy say entire India's country's economy or entire India's society how that behaves. So, entire economy how it operates that is the subject matter of macroeconomics. So, these two terminologies we will also use ok and the circular flow diagram is some sort of macroeconomic representation of the entire economics operation. So, it is a macroeconomic representation although its building blocks are microeconomic agents like farms and households ok. So, the circular flow diagram one side. So, this is a this kind of diagram ok. So, one side of this diagram is say household, household is there and another side of this diagram is farm is there ok. So, farms are responsible to produce goods and services we told, but when farms are going to produce goods and services what is the resources they will use? Definitely certain factors of production they have to hire, so that using those factors of production they can produce some goods and services. So, the resource what farms needs to produce goods and services those are called factors of production. And those factors of production we can broadly classified into four groups. So, those are called land, labor, capital. So, these are the three factors of production and the person or organization who organize who combine these three factors of production he or she is called entrepreneur, entrepreneur N -E -R, entrepreneur or organization, organization ok. So, and in economics this each of these uh, factors of production has specific definition like land, it is land usually when we tell land as if we are referring the upper surface of the earth that is not land in economics only that is land, but something else also is land is a part of land. So, land in economics is rather having a larger definition more wider definition. In economics resources which are directly available from the nature without any human intervention that is called land. In that way upper surface of the earth is also land when you are getting a big log of timber from forest that is also land ok. When you, you are getting some ore from mines that is also land ok. Directly available natural resources are called land, water from the sea or river that is also land in economics ok. It is little bit broader definition. What is labor? Labor is physical or uh, psychological mental power of human being whatever it has right or they have ok that is called labor. Capital in economics capital also has a little bit broader definition. Usually capital means we know that some money perhaps or maybe some machine or something like that. In economics capital means yes money is also that is sometimes called monetary capital in economics, machine also it is an capital. So, in economics definition of capital is that it is called capital 
produced means of products produced means of production so one resource or factor of production means means of production in factor of production which is already produced we told that land that timber a log of timber what you directly get from a forest that is land in economics right now suppose you are cutting that uh, big log into certain specific sized pieces blocks wooden blocks right those wooden blocks will be called capital why because using that blocks you are going to produce something else say maybe chair maybe certain furnitures right so when it is a raw timber log from directly collected from forest it is land but when that timber log is transformed into certain pieces of specific diameter or specific sized certain pieces of wooden log those will be called capital why those will be called capital and this is look at the definition of capital produced means of production this is some means of production some factors of production which is already produced through certain production activity what is that production activity here production activity through which you are transforming that timber log into certain specific pieces of land or specific sizes size pieces of uh, wooden wooden logs or wooden blocks right using that what kind of further production activity you will do you will uh, produce certain furnitures okay so capital and land definition in economics in that way the kind of uh, definition or common sense you people already have in your mind here the definition is little bit broader kind of thing so those are the factor of production and when entrepreneur and organization right the person or the a group of people or the organization which who is organizing these three factors of production and employing them together to produce something so that organizer what his target what he wants to get uh, through this production activity he will try to get some profit so here four factors of production in economics so three factors of production actually are there and fourth factor of production is actually organizing employing other three factors of production together and employing them for a production activity so each of them have some remuneration they are targeting like entrepreneur entrepreneur is trying to get some profit what will be profit okay entrepreneur whatever he is producing through this production activities goods and services that he or she will sell in the market it will get some uh, sales revenue from that revenue it will pay other three factors of production what he is hiring okay lands remuneration usually called rent labors remuneration usually called wage and capitals remuneration usually called interest interest okay so i am an organizer i am an entrepreneur i am producing something after that production whatever goods and services whatever i am producing that i will sell in the market i will get some sales revenue from that sales revenue i will give uh, land whatever land i hire i will pay rent for that wage i will pay to the labor what i hire and interest i will pay to the capital what i hire and after this three payment from my sales revenue whatever is remaining to me that is my profit okay so since profit is a remainder thing profit can be negative also right so whatever i am selling in the market if that sales revenue is not enough to meet up all this rent wage and interest i can get some negative profit right so revenue minus rent minus wage minus interest whatever is remaining that is called profit okay so these are the four factors of production in economics their definition okay and what is that Uh, remuneration respective remuneration okay now let me let me erase all these things okay now the question is these factors of production which farm is hiring to engage into production activity who owns that okay definitely household 
okay, some land I am hiring as a farm. So, the land is coming from some household who is actually own that land, who is the owner of that land, right. Similarly, labor I am hiring, labor is are coming from some other households, right, capital. So, all these factors of production, even entrepreneur, I am, I am an entrepreneur, I am also part of another household, right. So, all the factors of production, what farm is using in its production activity, those are owned by household. So, factors of production, those are going from household to farm and as a result, they are getting some money from farm to or monetary flow is coming from house, uh, farm to household. Okay? And this transaction is happening through a market that is called market for market for factors of production, factors of production. Okay. So, this red color, red color inner kind of flow that is actually real flow goods and services kind of thing because that is tangible kind of thing is flowing some labor, some land, some capital are flowing from household to farm. Okay. And out of this green color thing that is basically monetary flow, money flow outer ring, okay. money flow, money in terms of what? In terms of rent, wage, interest and of course, profit. Okay. Now, whatever money that households are earning from farm. Okay, selling households resources, factors of production that is owned by household to the farm. Okay. What using that money, what they are doing? Households are purchasing goods and services from the farms. Okay. So, down panel, bottom panel right things, red color thing that is also uh, real thing or some tangible goods and services are flowing from farm to households. F households are purchasing those from the farms for consumption purpose, goods and services, whatever farms are generating, those are purchased by the households. Okay. And monetary outer bottom outside green panel, this is money flow are going because the kind of earning households are getting those money they are using to purchase goods and services from the farms. Okay. So, that transaction is happening by another market that is called market for goods and services, goods and services. So, two markets are there, here markets for factors of production, here markets for goods and services. So, this circular flow diagram what we demonstrate here, how the entire economy, how the production and consumption do two basic activities, two basic economic activities within a society are happening within. So, in an economy in say Indian entire Indian economy, this kind of lot of things are there. So, many different types of production activities are happening, different types of farms are involved. Uh, those production activities, all you can capture together like this kinds of some circular flow diagram. Some household are inter, uh, associated there, corresponding some factors are, or some farms are uh, associated there and they are engaged into certain, uh, certain specific kind of uh, production of goods and services. Similarly, another kind of so, so entire macroeconomic activities broadly you can we can capture in this way through circular flow diagram. We have let us demonstrate another model. So, this is our first model we are demonstrating in this uh, course. Our second model is called production possibility frontier. What is that? Let us go to the next slide. So, production possibility frontier that is our second model production possibility frontier. So, before uh, demonstrating production possibility frontier, let me uh, introduce here another uh, another uh, couple of concepts that is called efficiency versus equity. So, we as we told any society uh, it has uh, limited amount of scarce uh, resources. So, that is why resources are scarce okay, and it has to manage uh, with those scarce resources. right? So, 
by efficiency when we tell the society is efficient it is basically that society is capable of best utilizing of resources what is available. In other words we can tell that maximum amounts of goods and services that society is able to produce using its scarce resources. If society can able to produce maximum amount we will tell that society is efficient if not we will tell that that society is not efficient or inefficient ok. And another concept is called equity what is equity by equity we are referring that whatever scarce resource any society has how equally that resource is distributed among its members among its economic agents ok. And you will realize sometimes after some some lecture in future you will realize in this course only you will realize that uh, usually any society face a trade off between these two means if you want to attain uh, efficiency perhaps you may have to compromise that equity principle both are desirable principle both efficiency is important equity also is important. But if you want to put more emphasis on one of them you may have to compromise another or other of them uh, may have to compromise certain uh, sometimes ok. Now by the production possibility frontier what we are drawing ok suppose a society whatever uh, vector of resources it has ok using that it can produce two commodities ok say those two commodities we are writing say food and cloth two basic commodities ok whatever resources. So, given a resource vector what a society has using that resource vector if it wants to produce uh, to these goods and services or these two fo goods foods and cloth. So, this is the frontier we can get that is why this is called production possibility frontier. This line this concave kind of line what we draw say a b kind of concave line by that line we are telling that it is the outer boundary of amount of food and cloth an economy can produce using its resources whatever it has ok. So, definitely if that society whatever it has the resources everything if it employ only cloth production it can generate this a point only food production it can generate point b if it can employ some amount of resources in food production and some amount of resources in cloth production it can generate this point this point this point all any of those points it can generate depends on how much resources it is employing to cloth production how much resources it is employing to food production in that way right. Mind that so long this society is able to generate any point on that frontier outer boundary that society is efficient one society can be pro can produce this point means what whatever resources it has with that resources it can generate this point it can generate this point or it can generate this point it can generate this point it can generate that side any point ok. So, definitely this society who is producing this point ok this point means what this month of food and that much of cloth right definitely we can tell that that society is not efficient enough and uh, it is inefficient it is it, it fails to efficiently utilize its resources ok to production uh, of two commodities food and cloth right. Now, uh, now uh, you can understand that every point since it is a concave line this kind of thing every point it is changing its slope. So, by its slope how we can term its slope the slope of this production possibility frontier is called ok. Some of your friend or you people now may have a question in your mind why this production possibility frontier will be a concave kind of line, why it will be downward sloping, why it will be concave, why not it will be con convex and all ok. I am coming to those points one by one right. Let us first discuss what its slope refers. Its slope refers, its slope is called marginal rate of transformation. Look when so suppose when at this point what is the slope this point is slope is much more steeper right if you draw a slope here it's much more steeper so if you from this point to that point when you are going suppose this is c point and this is d point c point to d point you are going means what 
you are trying to produce little bit more food because we are measuring food in the horizontal axis and cloth in the vertical axis right. So, C point to D point means we are reallocating resources in such that we want to produce little bit more food and uh, in terms or at the cost of little bit uh, cloth more cloth. So, we are cutting down our cloth production to produce more food right. So, marginal rate of transformation the terminology at the margin what is the rate of transformation between these two commodities cloth to food ok. Let me clarify here this transformation does not refer that as if we are literally transforming cloth into food. No, we are not doing that. What we are doing here? We are actually reallocating the resources in such that resultant we will get little bit more food and little bit less cloth. Okay. That is why it is called marginal rate of transformation although we are not literally transforming cloth into food right that is the so slope of this production possibility frontier is called marginal rate of transformation MRT marginal rate marginal rate of transformation ok that is the thing ok. Now, the first clarification let me tell you why this production possibility frontier will be downward sloping because any what I what we told what we repeatedly told that any society has limited amount of resources, resources are scarce, resources are not uh, boundless or boundaryless right, uh, huge amount of resources no, it is not boundless, it is bounded certain limited amount of resources are there. Now, with that limited amount of resources if you want to produce one, com one commodity extra suppose this A point you are from A point to this C point if you want to go ok, can you go to this vertical above this C point say suppose that is C dash point. What is telling that A point 0 amount of food and this much amount of cloth right and this C prime point is basically same amount of cloth, but some positive amount this much of food right that is not possible at all. because when entire resource vector whatever you have the society has if it can fully efficiently utilize that resource vector then it can only generate this a point. So, definitely if it wants to produce some amount of food it has to extract some resources from its cloth production and employ those resources into food production right. So, that is why production possibility frontier will be always downward sloping. I hope this is understood to everybody. Okay. It cannot be having the upward sloping or it can be horizontal or it cannot be vertical, it cannot be ok, it has to be downward sloping ok. Basic principle is that or basic understanding is that if you want to cut down or increase one production you have to cut down the other production for sure that is why it is downward sloping. Now, the second question is why this production possibility frontier will be concave ok, concave towards the origin not this kind of thing convex towards the origin let me try to understand that. Uh, using another uh, beautiful diagram ok. Actually this production possibility frontier because where the production possibility frontier what we we drawn here it is that so many different quality type of resources are there in a in a society you know some land is there some uh, labor is there capital is there all kinds of different kinds of resources are there. And this kind of production possibility frontier what we, 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 we have drawn uh, like this. Uh, this kind of production possibility frontier is for an entire society, entire economy ok. Let me just play with this production possibility frontier a little bit. Suppose this is India's production possibility frontier in last year and this year this is India's production possibility frontier. We are measuring food this side and cloth that side. So, this is last year production possibility frontier, outer production possibility frontier is this year. By this what we can refer or what we can uh, we can think? ok. Its implication is that perhaps technological know how the technology uh, knowledge level using which India is producing these two commodities right. Cloth production there is an technological innovation happens that is why using the same amount of resources it can be able to produce more cloth this year vis a vis the last year ok. But its food production is same. So, technological innovation happens in one of the two commodities production food production it did not happen. Instead of if this is the case technological production happens in food production, but there is no technological innovation happens in cloth production. If this is the case last year this was the thing this year this is the thing 
technological innovation takes place in both the production, but perhaps relatively more innovation happens in food production and relatively less innovation happens in cloth production and so on. Okay. In that way, you can play around with this kind of production possibility frontier. Now, let us quickly uh, demonstrate how why the production possibility frontier will be concave to the origin. Okay. Let me go to the another afresh uh, slide, let me take. Okay. Suppose only one resource is there, say Robinson Crusoe's story all of you know, right. Suppose Robinson Crusoe is in an island, right. And whatever resource it has, only the time in a day 24 hours, out of that perhaps 8 hours or 9 hours he is taking rest, okay. remaining whatever resource he has time 16 hours or 15 hours, he is gathering coconuts because a lot of coconut trees are there in that island. So, he is gathering coconut to uh, consume, to uh, eat. right? So, we are trying to draw Robinson Crusoe's production possibility frontier. Okay. You might know that Robinson Crusoe has a friend, the people who know that Robinson Crusoe story, you know that he has a friend, his friend's name is called Friday. Okay. Suppose Robinson Crusoe and Friday, they are there in that island okay, and they have a small fishing net. Okay. So, I am measuring coconut this side, coconut and that side I am measuring fish. Okay. Now, suppose the Robinson Crusoe and Friday two persons know, Robinson is very efficient in coconut gathering, but Friday is not that much efficient in coconut gathering, Friday is more efficient to uh, catching fish, Robinson is that much efficient, is not that much efficient in catching fish. So, if I draw their production possibility frontier, perhaps ro this is perhaps Robinson's production possibility frontier, it is a straight line, green straight line is Robinson's production possibility frontier and red straight line is Friday's production possibility frontier. So, this green I am telling this is the Robinson, this is the Friday. right? Now, so this production possibility frontier Robinson's or Robinson and Friday's who is that two separate production possibility frontier, what we do not, it will be straight line only, because the same amount of labor, same quality kind of labor, how you are uh, allocating uh, between the two commodities uh, gathering, okay, either coconut or fish. Now, suppose if both Robinson's uh, whatever amount of labor at per day and Fridays, both together labor they employ only for fish production, how much fish they can produce? they can produce definitely this much plus this much. Suppose that is here, their entire amount of resources or available time, if they, they employ only coconut gathering, how much they can? This much plus that much, suppose that is this. right? So, let us start with this point, suppose this is our point A, how point A is generated? Both Robinson and his friend Friday both whatever amount of time Robinson has per day perhaps 15 hours, Friday also have 15 hours of uh, labor per day. Those 15 hours plus 15 hours if they employ entirely in catching fish, A point can be generated. Similarly, those 15 hours plus 15 hours if they all in, in, entirely employ only coconut gathering, this B point they can generate, this is the B point. right? Now, suppose they are starting with the A point. Okay. Now, they want to because A point no only you are capturing fish, so only you are producing fish, so you are bored with fish consumption, this is only coconut you are good. So, they want to be uh, some fish and some coconut in between, right? they want to consume little bit amount of fish and little bit amount of coconut as well. What they have to do from A point? They have to withdraw some labor from fish production to coconut production. Now, the question is whose labor it is? it is rational to withdraw whose labor from fish production to employ coconut production. Definitely the person who is relatively inefficient in fish production, his labor should be withdrawn first. Now, if you withdraw the entire Robinson, because Robinson is relatively inefficient in fish production, right? if you withdraw entire Robinson's labor, how much fish you can you produce? Definitely the amount of fish what Friday can produce? Friday alone can produce, right? So, that much. And when you are withdrawing Robinson's entire labor, where you are employing that labor? Definitely coconut gathering. How much total coconut can Robinson produce? 
this much no so if they employ entire friday's amount of labor only in the fish production they can produce this much of fish and entire robinson's amount of labor in the coconut gathering they can produce this much of coconut okay so what will be that they are joint production possibility frontier definitely this kind of thing definitely this acd line look this ac segment must be will be the parallel to the robinson's production possibility frontier and this cb segment must be parallel to the friday's production possibility frontier so although we are we are in a situation where only one type of resource is there labor hour or time time of different but although one labor is there but labor are two different qualities robinson's labor is relatively efficient in coconut production friday's labor is more efficient in fish gathering right so although labor labor are two different qualitative kind of labor you may be very very efficient in physics your friend may be that not that much efficient in physics but he is very efficient in chemistry that can happen so same amount of labor has different expertise in different production so here only two different type of labor we are getting a production possibility frontier joint production possibility frontier with a kink kink at c okay in this way if you proceed suppose three different only labor but three different qualitative labor you will get the production possibility frontier having two kink this kind of thing and so on so as a result when we are talking about the entire economy it has lot of different types of resources and all right so different qualitative resources are there right so it has a tendency to get this kind of small 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 king so in a limiting sense you will get this kind of thing so with this robinson crusoe and friday's example uh, i am sure that it is quite clear to each of you that why production possibility frontier will be concave towards the origin and that concave production possibility frontier when we are talking about production possibility frontier for a entire country entire economy entire society right in that way let me just demonstrate one more uh, couple of uh, terminologies positive vis a vis normative statement that is there all these things what we are discussing are that this robinson friday's example this is not there in the chapter 2 of the book we are discussing but other than that all the things are there okay uh, please procure that book it is an, it will be an asset for you people so positive statement and normative statement what we refer let me just come uh, uh, tell that through positive statement we uh, try to narrate the real life what is there so suppose uh, in your class in a semester that uh, average score of a subject or on a on a paper by all of you people in that class is say 65 percent so i am telling that average score of this class is 65 percent quote unquote that statement is positive statement why because that's through that statement i am trying to narrate one fact now suppose i am making that thing in a different way i am telling that average score of this class is not that much good this not that much good when i am telling definitely the person who is telling that not that much good that person has some sort of benchmark in his mind his or her mind uh, who that average score perhaps he or she was expecting little bit more than 65 percent that is why he is telling that it is not that much good right so since the second term or second statement is ma made vis a vis some norm although norm is not exclusively mentioned here it is there in his mind that is why that kind of statement is called normative statement statement vis a vis certain norm sometimes those norm can be explicitly mentioned sometimes it is not mentioned explicitly it is it may be there in hidden in the background okay so you just try to understand by normative statement we will always uh, assign some sort of value kind of thing ought to be should be good bad this kind of value judgment is assigned with normative statement and positive statement that simply uh, statement that uh, this is the case okay say i am i, I am observing in this uh, room say uh, only red color chairs are there so i am telling that chairs are red so that is a 
normative uh, positive statement. Instead of that if I tell uh, chairs are not that much good looking that means what perhaps I do not like red color that much perhaps some other color I like. Okay. But that normative statement I have one kind of value judgment I am assigning somebody else may be telling that chairs are very good looking right. So, this normative statement always with having some sort of value judgment assigned with them and that is why that value judgment can differ from subject to subject person to person. When 65 percent average score I am telling that score is not that much good another person can tell that 65 percent score is very good. Okay. That depends on the person who is uh, telling that kind of statement uh, what is the hidden norm in his or her mind's background. Okay. Let us stop here and we will continue in our next class subsequent discussion.